Welcome to the Small Giants Virtual Workshop. I am so happy and so excited to introduce our workshop facilitator today, Connor, if you can wave there. There we go. So <laughs> Connor is uh, a managing director at Rescue Agency, and we got to know Connor and the rescue team uh, at last year's Small Giants Community Summit. Um, Rescue was named a uh, Forbes Small Giant, which means they were one of the 25 best small companies in America. So a big and well-deserved honor for that team. They have been so generous with their time and their wisdom um, since then, and including today, when Connor is going to share with us how to create a really thoughtful and successful onboarding program. So I think I covered everything, but if not, feel free to ask us questions. And uh, Connor, I'm going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel. And before we just jump in today, everybody, um, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, I just want to thank the, the Small Giants community team. Rachel, Hamza, and Jillian have been fantastic. Uh, they've been wonderful resources to us at Rescue. And hopefully you guys are seeing the fruits of their labor as well. So just thank you to the three of you and the Small Giants community team. I also uh, would be remiss if I didn't mention my own team at Rescue, in particular my human resources colleagues who have helped perfect our onboarding process year over year. Um, they've been instrumental in the tips and tricks that I'm planning to share today with you guys. And then last, I just want to thank each and every one of you for your time today and for joining this workshop as it shows your commitment to the employees that you have and the employee experience at your organizations. So I'm going to share my screen and hopefully this all um, works out well for us because I do have a presentation I would love to share with you guys. Bear with me here a second. Okay. Can somebody give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen? Yes, you're good to go. Awesome, perfect. Okay, um, so I'll start us off with um, today with just a quick overview of what we're planning on covering um, during the How to Create a Successful Onboarding Program workshop. We'll discuss how to build excitement and momentum before an employee's first day at your organization. We're also gonna cover best practices for a meaningful first day. And of course, our best tips and tricks for keeping your employees engaged so that you can retain your employees. Because statistically, great employee onboarding can actually improve employee retention by 82%, and that was done by a Glassdoor study, which is a testament to why we take our personalized onboarding so seriously here at Rescue. But before we get into um, our workshop today, I want to um, talk about um, my journey and why this is so important to us at Rescue um, and, and really just tell you about how onboarding, um, and this sounds a little cliche, actually changed my professional life and also the trajectory of our, our agency here at Rescue. So our organization was founded by a teenager when he was 17, our, our founder, Jeff Jordan, in 2001, which is crazy in and of itself. Um, and for the first few years, our company grew pretty organically. Um, during uh, when Jeff was in, in college, I hadn't worked with the organization yet, but when he was in college, he started to kind of grow the agency. Um, and then if we fast forward to 2011, um, I had been working in the commercial marketing agency world where um, I would work on what I would call like the sexier brands and products. And I joined our small little firm at Rescue, which was about 20 people at the time in 2011. And the reason I had joined Rescue was simple, and it was because I wanted to use advertising as a means to do good for the world, as opposed to using marketing as a means to sell goods. So there I was in 2011, you know, really bright eyed, bushy tailed, and super excited to be surrounded by, you know, 19 or 20 other like minded professionals who cared about social change the way that I did. And so within a few you know, weeks of ditching my previous ad agency and coming over to rescue, the owner, Jeff, had come up to me and two of my other colleagues and asked if we were down to go after a federal um, RFP, a request for proposal, that could end up um, you know, being anywhere around $200 million. And at the time, we were super small. Remember, this is 2011. I had no more than 20 other colleagues around me, and our av average revenue was, you know, was fairly low. But we were young, we were super hungry, and we were really passionate about social good, so we went for it. And for the sake of this webinar and making sure that I keep us on track here with our time, I'm going to spare you all the little details about our late nights when I didn't get any sleep or we all didn't get sleep and just lead to the really good part. It's when we found out that we actually won a federal contract which totaled over $210 million just before the holidays in 2012. 
So a few of my colleagues were super shocked that we won this. We didn't think we had a chance in hell, for lack of a better term. Um, so we changed our flights for our holiday plans. We changed our travel. We completely blew up what we thought we'd be doing over the holidays because we knew we had to begin planning for massive growth immediately. So from the contract award in 2012, we knew we would need to grow our team from about 20 employees to over 200 full-time staff and about 1,000 part-time staff in roughly 18 months which if you've ever had to grow an organization is insane. So I didn't anticipate this at the time, but we would also open several offices. So we opened offices in Washington, DC, in Atlanta, Los Angeles, Sacramento, and Seattle. And we had to hire hundreds of remote staff to support this growth. So if we were gonna succeed, every single detail of our employee experience would matter. And we knew that onboarding in particular, our onboarding of employees had to be successful in order for them to start their first day well and extend well beyond their first few weeks into the years ahead, which would lead us to where our organization is at today. So I'm going to take us kind of over our three part journey and talk about before the first day. Onboarding starts from before many people actually realize. Onboarding starts during the interview process and it really becomes paramount prior to an employee's first day. Each of us are likely somewhat established in our, our careers or our jobs. So it's important that we um, think about the employee first and about how they may, may feel arriving to their first day at work because some of us may have not had to experience that in you know, quite some time. So what I always like to do is put us in their shoes um, and think about, oops, excuse me, sorry, whoops. There we go. Um, put yourself in their shoes and just think about, you know, all the crazy things that could be going through their head. What I like to do is I like to think about the last time I changed a job or another gig that I switched to in the past and just ran through all of the anxieties that might have been in my brain. And, and you may have felt um, the same in a, in a previous uh, going into a previous position. So these could be questions like, I wonder if I was even their first choice for this role. Maybe they fit, you know, they're feeling like I could be the backup candidate, which obviously would cause some anxiety and some nerves before this, um, this first day. You know, they might be thinking, are people going to be excited to have them on the team? Or did they just get the job over potentially an internal candidate, which means there could be some drama for them going into the organization. Um, Everyone who dressed or who interviewed them might have dressed very differently. So what the heck are they supposed to wear? Should they bring snacks and lunch their first day? Um, aside from the interviewers, they probably have no idea what other people are like or what to anticipate. There's probably a dozen more anxiety provoking thoughts that I'm not thinking of or talking about, which means we have a lot of work to do in order to bring this employee in in a comfortable and uh, exciting way, which leads me to our next point here which is be noticeably excited. And I am talking enthusiasm that would blow the roof off of your building because as soon as a candidate accepts our formal job offer, what we do at Rescue is we ask all of our supervisors and our department leaders to show their excitement as many ways as they can. Shout it from the rooftops, make the excitement known both internally and with the new candidate. It's important for our internal teams to know how excited we are about a new employee starting because this is a new resource for the team. This could be a new skill set that you previously didn't have or a new expertise, or it could be just helping with the bandwidth and workloads of your internal, um, your internal teammates. But also for the new hire, this should come in the form of an email, phone call, or a text message. When they decide that they're gonna join the organization, make your celebration of that hire known. At Rescue, um, we use gifts a lot, so we always highly encourage gifts over email because it's just a fun way to really, really uh, hammer in your excitement. And after that excitement is made public, what our incredible human resources team does at Rescue is begin working with the employee's supervisor. Um, and what they do is they provide them with an onboarding checklist and reference document, um, which is one of our second kind of tips that you wanna work on prior to the first day. Um, by creating a standard onboarding checklist, what you're doing at your organization is you're ensuring that every single new employee gets to revel in that same carefully curated experience that you've created um, for these new employees, which is so important because you want every employee to feel the exact same way coming in your organization. They want to be excited, happy, and feel supported, which ultimately is going to lead you to higher retention with your employees for the months and years ahead. So we have two primary goals that we like to focus on. First is we like to set up the new hire and introduce them to the company and culture. Second is everything that's in the checklist focused on setting them up for success in their given role, which means providing them with the tools, resources, and info that they're gonna need to really thrive. 
One of the things that we do at Rescue that you might already do at your organization is we use, oh my gosh, sorry, my mouse is very uh, sensitive here. Um, what we do is we use Google Suite, which essentially allows us to share live documents, which is really important so that we can keep things updated and really seamlessly track and monitor documents. So what most of our supervisors will do at Rescue is they create this Google Sheet that includes the name of helpful reference documents, they hyperlink to that specific reference document, and they give an explanation of what they should obtain from this document or how it might be helpful to their specific role. And then last, we also include um, a section where the employee can add notes or questions. And this is helpful because, you know, as we all know, coming into a new organization, we're often inundated with information and documents. And so this is a nice uh, seamless way where you can have your employee, your new employee, track questions they have because we don't want them to forget about these really great questions that they're bringing and surfacing. So this gives you a way to kind of track and monitor that and be able to reference this on an ongoing basis during your weekly check-ins with that new employee. These are kind of two additional tips I have left to kind of help with, um, with uh, the, the pre-first day phase. And that's really um, ahead of your employee's first day. Our next tip is to set all the expectations about a week and ahead of the employee's start date. So what we do is about five business days ahead of the employee starting, we have our human resources team send an email that includes a lot of important information that's gonna help eliminate any surprises that the employee might feel and common anxieties that they might have. So first, um, what we do is we make sure we always provide them, and this might seem basic, but you would be surprised about how many people uh, forget to do this and overlook these details. But um, first is make sure that they have the office address and parking instructions. Where do they park? Is it in a parking lot? Is it on the street? Is it in a building? Do they need access codes to the parking garage? Do they need access code to the building? All of these details are really critical for that new hire to know how to get to work, where to show up, and make sure that they do it seamlessly. Also, we want to make sure that we tell people what time to show up and who they're going to meet. So, for example, at Rescue, what we'll tell them is that, hey, you're going to show up at 9 a.m. in our first floor lobby. You'll be greeted by Elle, who will be at the front desk waiting for you, and then she's going to escort you to meet your new supervisor, Dina. These details matter so that they don't need to worry about who they're going to meet at first, where they're going to go. They know that they're going to get greeted by Elle and ultimately see their supervisor, Dina. Next is we always like to give the employees the schedule for their first day. Ideally, you're always giving them the schedule for the week because you would have had time to plan it out and make sure that your employee is going to have a very successful first week. But at minimum, we give them their entire schedule for that first day. This includes what meetings they're going to have, who they're going to meet, and even where they've arranged to take them to lunch on their first day. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the lunch thing because I think it's important, but um, all of these details are very important for the first day. Give them their schedule so they know exactly what they're getting into on their first day. Next is we include also um, information on nearby coffee shops, restaurants, or any facilities that are nearby that may be helpful for, for the employee. Um, depending on where your office is located or where your team's going to be located, this could be anything from dry cleaning to childcare. Um, any tools or tricks that you can give that employee is just going to help them um, feel more comfortable coming in on their first day. Um, one of the other things we also do is we define our dress code. Um, at Rescue, we are business casual, which is very important to our culture and how uh, we engage. But we also like to make sure people have information about what business casual actually means. So we're lucky enough as a marketing agency to have uh, social media channels about our agency. So what we typically do is actually link out to our Instagram page where you can find plenty of photographs and videos of our actual staff engaging in our offices, which is important because then you can get a sense for how people dress, what the environment's like. Then last but certainly not least, we also make sure that we give them time to ask any last minute questions before they begin working for us. So we make sure that you know we encourage them if there's any last minute questions, please raise them to someone on the human resources team or their supervisor who's always CC'd on this email. So now for my last kind of um, helpful trick here. I'm actually going to break away from the, the presentation if you guys um, hopefully don't see that anymore. Nope, we're good. We're back awesome. to the Brady Bunch style. Great. And now um, for the final tip, before an employee starts their first day, um, what we recommend is have someone in leadership call the employee ahead of the first day. At Rescue, I actually personally call every um, employee the Friday before their start date. At Rescue, we always try and start our employees on a Monday just for a fresh start to the week. It only takes a few minutes for me to call the new employee, and it makes them just feel both special and excited. And to show you how this usually goes, I'm actually going to call on my friend Rachel um, to help be my acting partner 
in this lovely scene we're about to perform for you guys. So Rachel just got hired at Rescue, and we're gonna pretend that I'm calling her, and I'm gonna do what I always do and um, show you guys how it goes. So Rachel, pretend your phone rang if you didn't mind. Uh, hello, this is Rachel. Hi, good afternoon, Rachel. My name's Connor Lynch. I am the Managing Director at Rescue Agency. How are you doing today? Hi, Connor. Uh, I'm great, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, thank you. Um, hey, I was just calling because I wanted to tell you how excited we are to have you start on Monday. I know that um, I wasn't personally able to meet you during the interview process, but I did want to tell you, I connected with both Karen and Paul, who you interviewed with, and they had just such great things to say about you, and I just want to make sure that you knew that they gave me that feedback. Oh, well, thank you so much for sharing that, and, and thank you for the call. I'm so excited to join on Monday. Oh, you're, you're so welcome. Um, we're so excited for you to join our team, um, and you're just going to be such a great addition to our company, and I just want to make sure you, you know that as you head into the weekend. I won't keep you too long, but I want to make sure you're all set for Monday. You don't have any questions for me or regarding anything for your first day. I'm all set. Awesome. Well, I'm so thrilled to hear that. Well, we feel um, like we are so excited to have you come in on Monday. If you don't have any final questions, I'll let you go enjoy your lovely weekend, and I can't wait to see you in person at 3 p.m. on Monday. Oh, sounds great. Thank you so much for the call. Thanks, Rachel. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Let's give a little virtual round of applause for Rachel, who was my lovely acting partner. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> no problem. Um, so this is really important to me, and I hope that you can incorporate this into your organization. And I just want to call out a few things that you may have noticed from this, this fake call that we just did, which maybe didn't seem natural because now you know Rachel and me, but um, it would have gone something like that. Um, there's kind of four core things that I always like to try and make sure come across in that initial call. First is that we're very excited and the team is already raving about the employee. So I make sure to mention that I touch base with the people that they've already met and they're super excited about this person. That's just going to make the new employee feel good and feel excited to come into work. Also, it's nice to show all the new employees that someone in leadership, in this case, it's me at Rescue, but it could be any one of you or another leader at your organization, is already aware of the new employee and super excited to have them on board. And then also, um, you might have noticed, I mentioned the date and time when uh, Rachel would have had an opportunity to meet with me. I always like to tell them the time and date when I'm going to meet with them. If it's not on their first day, what date and time that will be. And then also, it's the last chance for them to ask any final questions ahead of their start date. I typically don't get any because we had already sent the email that I just covered um, from our HR team with the supervisor. So a lot of those questions get answered there. But it's always nice to make sure that if they do have any final questions that you're able to um, address those. So I think what I'll do is I'll pause here and pass it back to Rachel to see if we have any questions. Yeah, perfect. So anyone have any questions about leading up to an employee's first day? Anyone want to hire me for any acting gigs? We're we'll also open to that as well. <laughs> All right, I'm scrolling through. I don't see any hands just yet. Okay, cool. If any pop up, feel free to chat them and then we'll do a pause uh, similarly in just a few minutes. So if anything pops up, let us know. Uh, and Connor, let's forge ahead. Awesome. Okay, well, um, what I'll say is at Rescue, you know, we really believe that an employee's first Actually, day... Actually, can we pause for just one second? So we're seeing, it looks like just your desktop. Oops, one second. Let's see. Let's that. No problem. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Okay. Okay, is that better? Yep, it's just loading here, but I think so. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, so at Rescue, um, we let's focus on the first day and kind of what we do for an employee's first day. So this is the first Monday they've come in. We really believe it's um, an employee's first day should focus on meaningful experiences and interactions and never cubicle isolation or paperwork because we really want to make sure that we create an impactful first day. And so we have several tips and tricks for making sure that you welcome in your new employee in the best way possible. And first, this might feel like a no-brainer, which I understand, but always plan it out. We have um, a re we request at Rescue that every supervisor plans out and schedules the activity of the entire first day, ideally the first week, but at least the first day. So the employee is meeting the right people and having the appropriate interactions we want them to have. 
Um, most often an employee is given a tour of the office. Um, like I said, we have several offices at Rescue throughout the country. So no matter where they are located, we want to make sure that they learn the who is who and kind of who sits where right out the gate. Um, we also point out key information that's important for safety, but also just so that they're comfortable. So this could be anything like emergency exits, fire extinguishers, um, restrooms, supply cabinets, kitchens, and common spaces. This is important so that they start to feel at home in your workspace. Also, we always end the tour at the employee's new workstation or if they have an office at their office, which at Rescue you can almost never miss because we deck the employee's workstation out with major swag. So um, what we do is we have every new hire receives a new hire gift bag. This can include a branded water bottle. We do a signed welcome card from all of their immediate teammates. Um, we do a letter from our executive team. We give them branded pens, a branded tote bag marketing materials, um, anything about our company, anything we have on hand. We often, since we're a marketing firm, have a lot of swag. We have blankets and all kinds of things. So we make sure to um, really spoil them with uh, branded swag so they can start to wear this swag, represent the company, and really feel embedded in our culture and our company, which is super exciting. So if you already have swag, this is a great opportunity to give it to the employee at the onset of their employment. Or if you have budget and uh, that you can afford to create swag, that's a great idea as well because you want people to feel invested in the company and having them wear a t-shirt with your logo or carry a water bottle actually makes a big difference. Hey Connor, do you mind if we go back to a question that just popped up about that phone call that you make? Sure, absolutely. So the question was, if the person doesn't uh, answer, do you just leave them a voicemail or do you keep calling back until you reach them personally? That is a fantastic question. Um, I would say 90% of the time people don't answer their phones, I've noticed. So I think when you, you know, I know I do this. If I see a number that I don't recognize, I usually forward it to voicemail. I surprisingly get a lot of um, uh, calls forwarded to voicemail and then no, not a lot of calls back. So I always leave a voicemail and I pretty much give the same content, but um, always invite them to return my phone call if they would like with any questions or if there's anything I can do to make their day, their first day smooth. Great. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Of course. Okay, jumping back in, employees first day. Um, one of our next kind of tips is to introduce the new employee to the company. And this could happen in a variety of formats depending on how you uh, run your business. Um, this could be an all staff email. Um, if you have a company newsletter, it could go in the company newsletter or even during a meeting. And at Rescue, what we do is we have a 20 minute all staff huddle every single Monday morning. And this is really our preferred time to introduce new staff to the company because people are excited about this meeting every Monday. You know, a lot of people aren't excited about Mondays. Our team generally gets very excited about our Monday meetings because we share a lot of fun information. We introduce new people and it's, you know, it's quick, it's 20 minutes. So at each of our company meetings, what we'll do is we'll ask the supervisor to introduce their new staff member. And this um, can help take the pressure off the new employee, which we find very important because it's a lot easier for the supervisor to brag about the new employee versus them come and talk about their own personal pedigree. Um, so what we do is we have the supervisor get up there, share information about the employee, um, we also have a pretty fun culture at Rescue, so we also encourage quirky or fun facts alongside um, the individual's kind of resume, if you will. And then we also find it's really important at that moment for both the new employee, but all of your employees internally, um, to explain how this new person is going to fit into the organization. So specifically, how are, what are they doing on the team? What department do they sit in? And just really kind of set expectations with the employee and with your organization from the get-go. And then kind of bonus um, pro tip here, if you will. Um, one of the things we like to do is ahead of the employee actually starting at the organization, we typically send them a new hire survey to fill out ahead of their first day. And we ask just a bunch of fun questions. You know, where, where did you grow up? What's your favorite TV show? What's your favorite music? All of these kind of fun things. Do you have a pet? And what we do is um, not only use that information when we introduce the employee, bits of the information, but we also send out a new um, hire welcome email that goes to all of our employees. And we generally do this every month because we're typically hiring anywhere from like three to five people a month. And so what we do is send out a batch of um, of introductions over email after everyone's been introduced in this all staff meeting where we include much more of the kind of quirky fun facts which allows your employees then to latch on to something like oh you know um, Rachel who just joined our company she watched cheer on Netflix I also watched cheer on Netflix so now I'm gonna write her over our messaging program and we're gonna develop a relationship outside of just the day-to-day -day work 
which is always super fun. And we generally get a lot of quirky, fun answers through those surveys. Um, another successful um, element of our onboarding program has been assigning new employees a pure mentor. Uh, at Rescue, we have named these, we've branded them as what we call Rescue Rangers. And these staff are essentially really dedicated members of our team who know the ropes and represent our company values kind of flawlessly. And so typically what we do is we introduce the new employee to their peer mentor pretty early on on their first day. And we usually request that the new peer mentor take this new employee to coffee or tea or even just a walk around the block to get them out of the office and try and develop more of a personal bond. And there's a few kind of reasons for this. Really our goal of the peer mentor program is to develop an unintimidating relationship with someone who can answer kind of job specific questions for that new hire. And this has been really useful for us as we scaled from, you know, 20 full-time employees to 200. It was important that all questions from new employees weren't just funneling up to the supervisor because oftentimes the supervisor might be um, unavailable or what we found more often than not is actually that the new hire is embarrassed to ask what we would call, you know, these quote unquote stupid questions. There are no stupid questions, but you know, oftentimes an employee might feel like they might be asking a stupid question. So having that peer mentor available, that's someone that's kind of at the same level as them, that maybe has some personality characteristics that are similar, has really helped us um, create a, an environment where it's okay to kind of branch out, ask questions outside of just the direct team or just the direct manager. Um, in addition to that like nice walk, you know, with the peer mentor to go to coffee or tea, we also like to make sure that we take our employees to a first day lunch. Um, and usually we request that the supervisor um, as well as the new employee and then at least one other person from the team go to this first day lunch and we encourage them to, fo to not focus on work. So talk about things that are outside of just the day to day work and really focus on things about the employee or things about the team that might be um, more on the personal level. So what do they like to do for fun? What's the latest book they read or show they watch? Do they have pets, kids, a partner, etc.? And keeping the conversation light during this kind of hour, hour and a half break is really important to make sure that we're starting to make the employee feel comfortable and connected to us as employees, but also us and feel connected to them. And then one of the things that I mentioned at the top of the hour is that Rescue has dozens and dozens of employees um, that are remote. So as we've added telecommuters over the years, we felt that we wanted to make sure that their experience is not just a watered down experience of our in-person experience in one of our offices, which is super important if you have remote staff or telecommuters. Um, so if an employee is starting uh, their employment remote, what we do is we make sure that we set up a video conference with the, their peer mentor so that they're, instead of, you know, going for a walk around the block or to a coffee shop, that they're able to kind of sit and chat in an informal environment. We also um, make sure that if a new employee is starting, that they go out and they're remote, that they go out and they have lunch on us. So we tell them, you know, go have lunch on us and then please come back and share photos of where you had lunch or tell us about the place you chose in your local community. This is always really well received by the remote employee and it's a great conversation for those of us who aren't able to have that lunch with them because we can ask them like, oh, why did you choose a plant-based place? Or why did, you know, you like Mediterranean food? I like Mediterranean food, et cetera. Um, it's just a great way to make them feel engaged even though they're not here with us having an actual meal. And this, you know, all of these different approaches that I just went over are super people centric and they're critical to our onboarding process. However, it doesn't mean that the whole day needs to be filled with, you know, a bunch of chatter. We also like to carve out time for our new employees to settle into their workspace and get really comfortable with the computer and technology. We also introduce the new employee to our IT team, which is really important if you have an IT team on staff, is to connect them with these individuals so they can help get set up with the systems. Um, they can ask any questions about how to log an email, how to use their email or any various programs, and just make sure that they immediately develop a connection with anybody who could be of support to their technology needs. And then also we allow them to kind of sit back and fill out the necessary HR forms. We don't necessarily want them sitting at their desk reading a mountain of paperwork, but we do have a few forms that they have to fill out on their first day and as any organization would. And so for our last kind of tip for the very first day for your new employees is invite the employee to head out a few minutes early, if you can. Um, what we do is we request that the employee supervisor always swing by the new employee's desk an hour or so before 5 p.m. Um, and then first, the supervisor of the new employee should always check in on how the first day went. 
and ask for any feedbacks on how we can make the rest of the week more beneficial. And last, we tell them to tell the employee to head out early and go celebrate the success of their first day, celebrate this new partnership we have with them starting in our organization. Because in many of our industries, as you guys know, there are plenty of opportunities to work late night and long hours. We're a marketing firm, so there are plenty of opportunities for weekends and late nights. But the first day should never be one of those times where we're keeping an employee late. I've actually included on this slide a picture of my team, um, some of my team members with hashtag winning because I say anytime you get to leave work early, you are winning, especially in a lot of our industries. And so I think now I'll go ahead and pause and pass it back to Rachel for our activity before I go through the first few weeks and months. Yes, perfect. Before we jump into our uh, breakout rooms, does anyone have any questions about um, your employee's first day or even going back to beforehand? Let's see, I don't see any hands. So if anything pops up, let us know. Oh, here we go, one second. Um, one question for you, Connor, any tips on acclimating remote employees? Great question. And this is something that we've had to really refine and perfect over at least the eight and a half years that I've been at rescue because we have so many remote staff. Um, first and foremost, I would always say that anything that you can do over video is like paramount. So what we don't want someone to do is start remote either in their house or even in one of our smaller offices where they're just sitting alone all the time. That's not the experience that we have at Rescue. And so any meeting we always um, encourage and just shy of require that everybody gets on camera and actually has face-to-face -face dialogue. And so what you'll find is for somebody that's starting remote at our organization, what we do is um, we schedule out their entire first day. So they're meeting with different teammates, they're meeting with different departments, but it's always over Zoom is actually our preferred platform as well. So we use Zoom so that they're always getting that face-to-face -face interaction. Um, and this kind of extends beyond to every bit of what we do at our organization. You know, something that doesn't necessarily apply to, uh, to onboarding, but is important is, you know, if you have a holiday celebration or a holiday party or a summer party, those remote employees that you have are not getting to come to that experience at the barbecue over the summer or potentially a holiday party where you're going to a dinner or something like that. And so what we make sure that we do is we create careful curated experiences for our employees that are remote. So for example, when we do our big summer outing here in San Diego where um, I am based at one of our arts our headquarters at rescue you know we might go over to the bay and have a barbecue and there's you know lawn games and that sort of thing but we're leaving out a, a big chunk of our staff who's not here with us in San Diego so what we do is we actually create a package for them that allows them to have their own kind of summer experience and so we've done this in a number of ways but it's a way that you can inexpensively give them their own experience at the same time that you are you know sending your employees over to the park locally um, and so I could actually go into probably a whole webinar if we ever want to schedule that my friends at small giants um, about telecommuters and remote employees but I'm happy to chat maybe more if you have specific things that uh, that would be helpful for you yeah that's perfect maybe just one more on that it seems like a popular um, topic here but do you the swag that you deck out the new employees desk with do you ship that to remote employees in advance Great question. Yes, we do. So what we typically do for our remote employees is ahead of them beginning at the company, we get their home address or if they're in an office or a co-working space, we get that address and we make sure that they understand when they're going to receive their laptop. And what we do is we actually include all of the swag with, so they're expecting their laptop. They end up getting a lot more than just a laptop. They get, you know, their water bottle, they get their swag bag, they get their t-shirt or their blanket, whatever we're giving out at that time and really, you know, deck it out and encourage them to, um, to wear it, use it, and then share photos with us so we can share it on our, our social media pages, but also share it with our internal teammates. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for those questions. Um, all right, so we're about to go into some Zoom breakout rooms, and uh, this is where your homework comes in. If you didn't complete it, that's okay. You can do it on the fly. Um, but what you, we're going to do is you're going to split up into groups of four-ish um, for about five to six minutes. Um, and in your group, we'd love for you to discuss, based on uh, the onboarding process that you documented, however crudely, um, first of all, introduce yourself. So just say who you are, what type of role you're in. Um, share a couple strengths of your current onboarding process. What do you do really well? And then based on what we've learned about before an employee joins and also on their first day, where are a couple of places where you could improve your current process? So I said that pretty fast. Everybody good? 
introduce yourself, strengths of your current process, and some areas where you could improve it. So you're gonna get a pop-up from Zoom in just a minute, accept that, and then when we're ready to bring everybody back, you'll get a one minute warning, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. There we go, have fun. Are we all back, Hamsa? We're all back, okay, great. First of all, aren't Zoom breakout rooms fun? Very Isn't that cool? Very cool. Um, yeah, it was really fun. It's one of our, our favorite features. So hopefully you guys got to meet a couple new people. You made some new virtual friends. Um, but I, we'd love to hear from you. So we'll look for maybe two people who can raise their hand and share um, what are a couple strengths of your current onboarding process. So that first question, what are a couple of strengths? Okay, I'll go first. Um, okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Ipani, and I work for a fintech startup company here in DC. We also have um, an office in Bangalore, India. So a lot of virtual meetings take place. Um, we do a really good job at um, keeping that um, communication open and engagement before the first day. Uh, we actually have a structured first day email that goes out a week before the first day you know, on um, what to expect for that week, what time to come in, parking, if you're taking the metro, if you're in your DC office or in the Bangalore office, the cost of parking. Um, we also talk about, you know, how do, we would have your work tools ready all in preparation for the first day. And on the first day, we do a pretty good job at um, what the tour is the first thing we do. And we have the calendars all set up, meetings scheduled. However, uh, we're beginning to think that um, sometimes coming in on the first day and seeing all that meeting invites might be a little bit intimidating when you see your calendar filled up. And I really love the idea of taking it slow on the first day. Uh, I also love the idea of leaving early to celebrate the first day. So we would be looking at that. Okay, wonderful. You have got some great things in place. That's awesome. Thank you. All right, Heath? I'm gonna unmute you here. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So I would I would kind of uh, I would say uh, kudos Connor for everything you kind of went over and, and thanks for sharing all of that first. Um, and then I would say from our onboarding process, uh, we have uh, a lot of similarities in regards to what you were stating. Uh, one of the things that we have from a strength perspective is on the first week we have what we classify as ambassadors. So similar to what you were stating is the one person that's the sole key person that that person, the new person can come talk to and is going to regularly be um, corresponding with throughout the first week and understanding everything. Uh, they also lead the tours on the first day. Uh, we do the, the lunch deal where we kind of get together with some of the team if they are on premise or if they're remote. Uh, and then specifically um, giving them some expectations, at least from my side, from being, from being the manager specifically, would be saying, hey, these are my expectations that you have for the first three weeks and outlining what that is and giving them some kind of a structure um, of who they're going to be working with, what they're going to be covering, and then my expectations to them so that they can have some kind of structure themselves to, to know what's going to be. Um, for the company that I work for, we typically tell them that they're probably not going to be real comfortable for the first six months at least. <laughs> just we have a lot of things that go on with the company that I work for um, that just they should just be a sponge as much as possible. And so um, not expecting them to within a week be able to turn around and, and, and increase revenue substantially for, for what the group that I'm working with within. So. Um, so yeah, I say that would probably be a strength that we have, uh, very similar to what you have going on over there. So. Excellent, great setting expectations. All right, let's hear from one more person, but let's switch it up. Someone please share, um, what is the biggest takeaway that you have learned so far that it popped up in your mind and you said, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm gonna do that tomorrow. That's such a great idea, we need to do that. Let's see. Doesn't have to be as intense as that. It doesn't have to be you're gonna do it tomorrow. It could be in the next quarter. So that would be okay too. All right, Rebecca, go ahead. Thank I you. I would say a lot of things. I was telling my group this, but we have, I'm, I work for a small event planning firm and we're, we've grown, we're about 25 people and we grew by nine people last year. So a lot and a lot in the fall. So we had a lot of people coming on at the same time. 
um, I won't be able to use this right away because hopefully we haven't, we're not hiring again for a minute, but um, just the importance of that onboarding piece, the 82%, that, that number with how that really makes a difference for somebody's, um, not just their first day or week experience, but their longevity with the company. We value that. We have low employee turnover. So we value that a lot. So the more we can do to ease anxieties, that, that definitely resonated with our group too, um, easing that pre-day one anxiety and really setting them up to be successful through that first day. So a lot of things really, I have pages of notes. I think there are a lot of small things that we can do um, as we develop our program and as we grow. So a lot of really, really helpful nuggets that we do a little and we can just take it to that next level. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you everybody for who raised your hand. Um, Connor has one more section he's going to talk us through, uh, and then we will wrap up. So Connor, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, thank you. And then thanks everyone again for sharing. Appreciate that. Okay, here we go again. Hopefully this works out for us. Okay. Can you see my screen again? It's loading. <laughs> it's loading. Yep. There we go. Looks good. Awesome. So, okay, so we've covered a few things. We talked about before they start, we've made it through their first day. So now what? Well, we believe that welcoming an employee into an organization has to carry well into their first few months. And that's to the point that I, I think it, your name was Keith. Sorry if I got that wrong, but Keith, you just made that point, which is awesome. But this is important because the first week is really important for us to then solidify our support and desire for the new employee to succeed and ultimately create what we like to call fan status of our organization. One helpful tip, tip that we have is for organizations to automate the onboarding process where it makes sense. Not everything should be automated, but at Rescue, what we do is we use a series of videos to introduce our team, our work, our culture, our values, and an overview of kind of the important processes that they need to know in order to kind of function in their role. And the goal of these videos is that they're watched in small chunks. We don't wanna inundate an employee just on their first day or their first week with just sitting at their desk watching videos. We like to kind of sprinkle these throughout their first week or for several weeks so that they're able to really um, digest all of the important information. And what, why we do these videos is because we're able to be more efficient with our, our human capital, with our resources. So we don't need a, you know, one employee to give the same presentation or same speech over and over. As we're going from 20 employees to 200 employees, it would be impossible, for example, for me to meet with every new employee and give them the same overview of our company. And instead, we just create a video that then we could you know, really automate the system. And then one pro tip that we always recommend is um, through our human resources information software, we're able to actually uh, deploy quizzes on the content. You may have to do this more manually, or if you have a system, an HRIS system that can accommodate this, um, one of our tips is to incorporate these quizzes um, throughout the trainings so that you're ensuring that the messages are being comprehended, which is super important because as all of us know, as we go into a new organization, we, there's just so much to learn. And so this is a way that you can really make sure that they're comprehending the information um, well. And then outside of the videos, what we want the rest of the week to really focus on at Rescue and what we recommend is always spend the first week engaging socially with peers. And this is both socially to become acquainted with one another, but also strategically so they can start getting to know and work closely with the people that they're going to be interacting with on the day to day and their specific role. And so some of the specific uh, meetings that we recommend setting up that first kind of week or in the first few weeks is first a meeting with the new employee and the supervisor so that they're reviewing the employee's job description, discussing the role and the expectations of that. By going over the formal written job description, you're able to really nuance out any confusion about what the expectations are for that employee so that they're gonna just deliver um, beyond what your hopefully your expectations are in their role. So by going over these core job functions, you're making it really clear to that new employee what the expectations are and they have a chance to then ask any questions about the specific duties that they have. We also recommend doing a daily 30 minute check-in each day in that first week and then you can start to have less of those meetings, but those should extend ideally into the first few weeks where the supervisor is having a 30 minute meeting just to check in and answer any questions that arise in the first week. As we all know, starting a new company there, you always have dozens of questions. And so making sure that you create space to, for the employee to be able to ask those questions. And if it's too much on the supervisor or the manager of that new employee, you could always also kind of spread those meetings out between you and your HR team. If you have 
an awesome HR team. I'm lucky enough to have five colleagues that help um, divide and conquer that work. Um, and if your organization does any behavioral or personality assessments, it's great to have your employee do that at the onset of their employment so that then you can learn about their results and have a meeting with their peers or the key people that they're going to interact with on the day to day so that they understand their working style and their preferences. This is both beneficial for the new employee, beneficial for the manager, and then any staff that are going to be working with that person on the day to day. And if you don't currently implement a behavioral or personality assessment for the workplace, I have plenty that I would recommend not only from um, the ones that we've done at Rescue, but also um, a few others that I've had at other companies and would be happy to share potentially after this meeting or could be connected by one of my friends at Small Giants. Um, and then last but not least, um, we always recommend that human resources and the supervisor always have a weekend check-in for the first few weeks. So on the, you know, the Friday of each week, check in with the employee and get feedback. What we want to have is feedback from the employee on how we can improve our onboarding process. One of the reasons that we've perfected it over the years is because we really do want our staff and our new employees to share with us what's working well in supporting them, what's maybe overwhelming them, what's confusing, what's not working, and then what's working really well. And we want to really hone in on that and make sure that, you know, we keep iterating the, the process as we move forward with onboarding. Okay, now what happens in the months and weeks ahead, a lot is going to happen. And to, to Keith's earlier point, it's really important to make sure that you really engage that employee because they're still learning the ropes for their first several months. And onboarding really shouldn't ever stop a week or two into welcoming an employee. What we believe is the integration process should feel personal and prioritized for the first several months. So we do a few key things that I found to be really successful and my team has really enjoyed. So one of the things that we do is after the first few weeks of an employee working at rescue, what we do is we invite our new employees. So it'll be a group of people, maybe five, seven, 10 new employees to a program that we call coffee with Kristen. Kristen is rescue CEO. So what we want to do is allow these employees to meet in small groups of recent new hires and get to know our CEO. And, and ask any questions they have. And uh, the earlier question about telecommuters and remote employees, they're not left out of that by any means. What we make sure that we do is that this is also, um, ex, you know, in the people that are remote are invited. So they're able to participate in this kind of coffee talk. We encourage them to grab a cup of coffee from their uh, kitchen, or if they're in an office, grab it from one of our offices. But they come and they sit down with our CEO. She shares, you know, our vision for our company. She talks about the obstacles that we're in, challenges that we're going to face, and also the opportunities ahead of our organization. And this is really just a nice way to make sure that, you know, someone at our organization who's very busy also is taking the time to make sure that they get to know the new employees and share kind of the vision for where the company's growing, which we found very successful. Um, and so you might have noticed there's nuances between what my role does versus the CEO and or my HR team, and that's purposeful, and that's worked really well for our organization. Then also, what we want to make sure that we do is the first few weeks or months of onboarding employee is we provide ample opportunities for them to discuss strengths and areas for improvement, but also goals ahead for the year. So we at minimum ask our supervisors to check in at 90 days, but we um, highly encourage that they do it at least once a month on specifically on the goals ahead for the first 30, 60, 90 days, and then ultimately for that year. But also we solicit feedback because we want to know that we're doing our best and we're always trying to iterate so that we're constantly getting feedback for improvement. Um, and because that's really been woven into the fabric of who our organization is um, and, and how our, or, our onboarding program has come to life. And before I turn it back over to, to Rachel, I'm going to leave you guys with one more story here. And I can exit this guy for a second. But I wanted to make sure that, um, that I kind of close the loop from how I started um, back to when we went to 2012 when Rescue won this $210 million federal contract. Um, I will tell you guys, we were not the only business of our size to win one of these large pieces of federal work. So there was four other small businesses alongside us that were much like ours, 20-ish people, that won pieces of business right next to us in this same federal contracting vehicle. Um, and what happened was over the first few years at Rescue, we slowly watched each of these businesses one by one struggle. About every, I would say, year or so for our first couple of years on this big federal contract, we noticed one, you know, one contract get pulled, then another, then another, until we were the only small business left working on this federal contract. And so while these companies were losing revenue and facing huge layoffs, our company continued to grow and our headcount and our revenue grew as well. 
And there's probably a number of factors that, you know, that I, I can speculate on that ultimately led to this. But I truly believe that these organizations, based on what I know, did not put their people first. And so while me and my colleagues really willed our growth to happen, we also put the processes in place to scale on board and ultimately service our employees and be of service to the employee. And so I'm going to get really cheesy with you guys because I'm a pretty cheesy guy in life. But in business, I've always championed a really famous quote, and I think it's important for the way we think about our employees and onboarding from the incredible Maya Angelou. And you probably heard it, but it goes, I've learned that a lot of people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So no matter what you do in your onboarding program or in your company for all that matter, the employee should always be top of mind. And most importantly, you should hold yourself and your team accountable for the power that you have to make that employee's experience exceptional. From the day they accept their job to their first day or first weeks or even to the day they retire, you have so much power to really make them feel special, keep them retained, engaged, and just an active fan of your company. And with that, I'll just say thank you guys. Okay, well, that's it for this one. Check out more Small Giants workshops at smallgiants.org.